The Schoolock Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community answers questions on everybody's mind right now politically. But I decided to go ahead and explore this scenario that if Trump don't leave, you know, he probably don't have no plans to, you know, get stimulus or not. You know, you don't know what he's tweeting this and that every day. You know, we not partisan. You know, we with him if he giving stimulus. We, you know, we not with him if he not giving stimulus. I mean, that's basically what, you know, this channel is about. But Anyway, we're not partisan. Whoever gives stimulus, go ahead and give stimulus. That's the, But let's just explore this idea. I'm going to pass it to my homeboy, James. James, go ahead and take this away. The School Lock Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community presents what would take place if Trump won't leave the White House. The United States has actually sustained a long, ugly and contentious presidential election. A divided country, entrenched into two teams, views their political challengers with suspension and ridicule. After a hard-fought battle, Joe Biden was anointed by the Associated Press as the declared winner and president-elect. There are remaining concerns that the U.S. has actually not seen the end of this presidential drama unfold. President Donald Trump declares voting abnormalities, and has actually sworn to seek legal redress and take his claims to the U.S. Supreme Court. His legal obstacles, to figure out if there have actually been violations of voting laws, might challenge Biden's authenticity as president. Trump happily proclaimed, our campaign will begin prosecuting our case in court to guarantee election laws are totally promoted and the rightful winner is seated. He added, the American people are entitled to an honest election, that suggests counting all legal ballots, and not counting any prohibited ballots. Considered that over 70 million Americans elected their respective prospects, it's critically crucial to make sure that there's a resolution of any outstanding claims for the sake of the country. The peaceful transition of the baton of governmental power is among America's the majority of cherished traditions. It's a hallmark and structure of our democracy. In recent contemporary history, the US has actually experienced a few contentious races. There were allegations of vote rigging in the 1960 election, however Richard Nixon yielded to John F. Kennedy however. In 2000, the governmental race boiled down to evaluating ballots by hand, inspecting hanging chads in Florida to find out who really got most of votes. Al Gore gave in to the Supreme Court's judgment that George W. Bush won the governmental election, although there were remaining concerns if the count was actually precise. The Business Roundtable is an exclusive subscription of upper echelon CEOs from major corporations, who preside over more than 15 million staff members and make more than $7 trillion in yearly incomes. The organization, led by Walmart CEO Doug McMillan, conducted a video conference to talk about the unthinkable what would take place if Trump doesn't leave office by January 20th. The elite CEOs concurred, they're all fine with him taking and attract the court, to a judicial procedure. Yale management professor Jeffrey Sonnenfeld, who led the conference said, they didn't want to reject him that. But that doesn't stop the transition. It does not harm anything to let that grind through. There is no indication that any of these would change the result. The roundtable stated that there isn't proof of widespread scams. Nevertheless, that is not exactly what Trump is alleging. He is pointing out there appears to be questions and suspicious activities specifically surrounding particular cities and states that contained essential swing votes. The CEOs did not take any instant actions and demurred making any choices until November 20 when there's a scheduled certification of votes in Georgia. The group talked about possible uncomfortable situations, such as seditious riots at Trump rallies and mass shootings like Trump's ouster of Defense Secretary Mark Esper and other Pentagon authorities. They were stressed over how the country and economy would respond to a recalcitrant Trump, bunkering down in the White House. Sonnenfeld said, they thought it could have a very devastating effect upon markets, on public rely on the procedure. If this were to take place, Sonnenfeld stated they'd take action to ensure that the Republican chosen officials do their jobs and then be patriots and regard the process. There might come a time when CEOs will be forced to utilize their power and impact and cease remaining quiet and take appropriate steps to stop any possible violent interruptions. It's reasonable that CEOs and people alike would be worried that there's a small opportunity of a fight over who is the genuine president. Even the most ardent Trump fans would freely acknowledge that Trump discovers petulant, argumentative and volatile. He admits this himself in his books, such as The Art of the Deal, as these are service techniques to distract, bully and benefit from foes. Trump jumped the gun and too soon stated triumph on the night of the election. He then guaranteed to go to the Supreme Court in an effort to halt vote counting. This stired worries that he may decline the results and snap. Biden's group has a phalanx of legal representatives standing all set for a legal fight. 
his army of lawyers will wage war with Trump and his allegations of fraud, relative to mail-in voting. Biden said that federal officials will escort Mr. Trump from the White House with great dispatch, if necessary. It does not seem that our Constitution has guidelines on what to do if a sitting president won't willingly leave office. This is one of the lots of factors that triggers concern. Would the Secret Service be gotten in touch with to physically evict him or could they rally on his behalf? Who would request for the FBI, CIA or Army to take charge? Could we have a situation in which armed federal government representatives battle amongst themselves? This could cause nationwide crisis and civil war. The odds are high that this will not happen. It's healthy for our democracy to have the ways for Trump to pursue his complaints through proper legal channels. If abnormalities are discovered and laws broken, there should be investigations. If the courts determine that there wasn't enough scams to invalidate the elections, power must be transferred over. Trump loves a show. We forget that his Apprentice TV program moved him from a well-known New York City realty billionaire to a national icon. Leaving office feeling cheated sets up his next act. Trump's ego may not permit him to yield, but that's not mandated to turn over power. He'll likely establish a shadow federal government in exile. Trump, now the aggrieved underdog, will take a trip the nation holding massive rallies for his staunch constituency. There is talk that he might begin a digital news website to contend against Fox News, especially as Twitter may pleasantly ask him to stop tweeting. The next couple of years will be another season for his show. Trump will use his rallies and brand new media online profile to make a remarkable run for the presidency once again in 2024.